You're listening to the Joe Mays and Jay Raff Show, giving you weekly sports analysis, opinions, and discussion. Now, here are your hosts, Joe Mays and Jay Raff. Well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the 196th episode of the Joe Mays and Jay Raff Show. I'm one of your hosts, Joe Mays, and alongside of me, joining me once again this week, co-host Justin Raffoff. Yeah, um, back to talk uh, football, you know, as the regular season kind of wraps up here. Um, you know, plenty of plenty of interesting things to talk about, not necessarily all games that will determine, um, you know, playoff outcomes, but there's definitely lots to talk about in regarding many of the games uh, that are going on today. Yeah, and there's some surprise scores, at least uh, ones that are closer than expected. There's some that are blowouts. Uh, we have teams resting some players. We have teams looking disinterested. We have some games that actually do mean something, though I think most of those are later in the day yeah. for the most part. Um, the biggest ones, the biggest one probably going on at this moment as we talk is probably Jets Bills. Yeah. Jets Bills is important because if the Jets win, they're in. Right. If they lose and the Steelers win, which they currently are doing, the Steelers are in. Right. So th- those are that's the biggest one. Uh, the Steelers are taking care of business. The Jets are not. So that's an interesting. It's mm-hmm. also big um, for the Texans because if they win, they're in. Though the odds of them making it is remote because of the amount of stuff that had to go in the Colts' favor. Right. Exactly. Um, one of them being the Dolphins winning, which the odds are that, even though until a few minutes ago they were winning at 10-3. to 3. It's now 10-10 in Miami. The Patriots are going to mount this. They're probably, I, honestly, this game will finish 45-10. to 10. It, that, would be, that would be about how it's going to go, I, I think, too. Um, I did see um, Brady got his ankle rolled, but didn't even – I think he limped to the side, but I don't think he missed a play and has continued to play well um, in the game, so – I don't think that is a big issue. The thing for the Patriots is if they were to lose and the uh, Bengals and Broncos win, then the Patriots all of a sudden Are might three seed maybe? be playing. I think they're the three seed. And then all of a sudden, um, you know, Edelman and a couple of the other guys that are expected back for the divisional round, all of a sudden there's a the game the before card. that round. Right. Now, again, it, who knows what that what that will end up being. Um but, you know, just imagine that could mean you have um, a Jets, if the Patriots were to lose, you could end up with a Jets-Patriots third game of the year, which, you know, the benefit or the benefit of the doubt has to go to New England there. Or um, Steelers against New England, where I'm not sure either team could actually stop the other team. Um, right. It, now, that's a long way from happening, and you already kind of let in, and I, I would agree. I think... Um, you know, New England's going to probably pull away in the second half. And yeah, I mean, they already a, scored to tie the game. They already have the ball back. Uh, I just right. I don't see Miami holding. It was nice that they showed up in the first half, but I'm sure New England's now going to take it to them. And and, and a theme we're going to start to see with some of the games that we do talk about, whether there are playoff implications or not, uh, the Dolphins have already uh, basically said – I don't know if they actually fired him or if he's going they to did. be fired. Dennis the GM, was, the GM they is fired. They usually parted ways. Right. So, so the GM is he not coming back. probably was given the option to resign. Which means, and you could see this coming, the interim coach is not coming back. So you're going to have a clean sweep there in Miami. They could have an entirely new staff. There may be no, none, no one on the staff. Right. They already got rid of the defensive coordinator. Right. They got rid of, the, obviously, the head coach. Dan Campbell stepped in, and while he won his first two games in big fashion – um, at the time, they weren't impressive. Now, beating the Texans by that much is kind of awesome now. But it's kind I, of it was kind of the rallying point for the Texans. Yeah, it kind of actually they've, helped them. Yeah, they've turned around their season since then because yeah, they beat up on the Titans and Texans. But now Houston is uh, poised to uh, finish, I think, nine and seven, uh, make the playoffs, uh, win that division with four different starting quarterbacks this year. Bill O'Brien getting it done, not a shocker. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I remember two years ago now, almost exactly two years ago at this point that we weren't sure exactly how he would translate to the NFL as a head coach because some of the things that were coming out after his time at Penn State weren't exactly flattering right. um, in terms of how he handled some things. Um, but maybe he was built for more for the pro game, and I right. think he's showing that. He got it done at Penn State. I mean, he's 
He helped to save the program. Oh my gosh! Him and, yeah. and those players that he talked to that are always talked about in Audi and Zordich, mm-hmm. th- those are the two big ones. They essentially kept Penn State football alive. And yeah. now two years removed. I mean, even even you know a year ago, I was already feeling better about it. Mm-hmm. Um, probably helped that Franklin was recruiting so well, and now two straight seven and six seasons aren't incredible. But no, but you survived the sanction years without a l- losing season. That's pretty impressive, right? And. You know, I in terms of college, I'm usually willing to give a coach. I'd like to say a full four, but I'll give him three and a half. Right. Franklin's only done two. Right, and I I was talking to someone this morning. I know there's a little sidetrack for to Penn State, but somebody said you know they're still not sold on Franklin, and I said I I get that. Like I'm not trying to sell you on him as like the game day coach because I'm I'm still I'm not necessarily necessarily sure that I'm sold there. But the thing is in college especially in you could see it in the pros if he surrounds himself if if they got the offensive coordinator higher right which let's face it any improvement on offense is is yeah is a good if they can have somebody said if they just have a competent offense and a good defense all of a sudden they're a better team than they have been the last right. two years. They're probably not making too many big 10 championships game with just a competent offense right. and the problem and the problem with that is the other three best teams in the Big Ten are all in the division. Well, and, but, and but you know, that's just the way it is. You don't want to hear it because you always want to strive for 12-0 and and then a berth in, right. the, in the college football playoff. But, oh, by the way, man, did they mishandle the uh, television schedule for that. Yeah. Holy crap, yeah. that's terrible. And, it, and it's bad all over. Well, like, everyone that I talk to, and this everywhere. is from big college football fans to just, you know, like I'll watch the big games kind of fans. They're all like, why are the games on New Year's Eve? Why are right. they not on January 2nd? There's right. nothing going right. on. They should have switched. The games that were yesterday should have been the New Year's Eve games. Yeah, right. Penn State should, should have played New Year's New Eve. Year's Eve, and then you have Saturday all by yourself. Which you're supposed to have. That's college right. football day anyway. all by yourself for the two playoff games. Yeah, they, and they still have over a week till that other game, till it, the championship Right, game. yeah. You'd have, uh, they blew what, it. nine days? You yeah. still have like Instead, a they lost half. over 40% of their viewership. That's insane. That, like, that is a crazy number. So, yeah. I mean, things would definitely be changing there. I don't like to have a shakeup of people right. that are advising well, them. Well, the thing and, is, and if you look at it, you know, you had, yeah, Michigan State is not the huge, but when you look at it, Michigan State's a huge school with a huge alumni base. Not necessarily as well known as some of the other big schools, but it is a big uh, time football you have Alabama which is going to draw a lot of people to watch um, Clemson again it's kind of tough there but you had Oklahoma playing so the the you had a, some big name teams in this and just got crushed in terms of drop yeah and in, for, in I numbers. mean thankfully for the Big Ten there was no one watching the game Whew. um yeah. Now, unfortunately for Penn State fans, the Big Ten watermarks were Michigan and Ohio State because yeah. the Michigan State and Iowa and Northwestern got obliterated. Now, Penn right. State came back and made it you know, respectable, right. Right. Um, but the Big Ten didn't look good in the bowl season once again. And this no. year people were talking think... about how maybe Big Ten was the best conference right. in the nation, and then you have the two supposedly best teams from the Big Ten right. get obliterated. That's what hurts. Like, you look at Penn State losing By to, seven Georgia. to Georgia. They're a 9-3 and three SNC, SEC team against a seven and five big 10 team. Like I get that, you know, Georgia looked bad at the end of the season, but there's still, you know, you're still talking about a nine and three sec team there. Um, you know, you look at Florida who won the sec East got destroyed by Michigan. Michigan, what, 41 right. to seven. And I think that's some of, and you know, some other things like, um, unranked Wisconsin beats ranked USC. That was a good one. That like, was that's a, a big one. one. And Ohio state beating Notre Dame. Those are three big wins. So the wins that the Big Ten did get, they weren't bad. Were, were helpful. Yeah, you beat USC, Florida, right. and um, and Notre Dame. That right. should make you some waves. But the problem is, Michigan State and Iowa were the two right. that were supposed and, to be the banner team. And if they lose, okay, but they, they got, got humiliated. Yeah, they were them, absolutely right. humiliated. So, so I think the Big Ten's still five and four, which is which is okay. Um, but they they had a chance to do a lot better uh, this year and. Uh, we'll have to even regroup. if they win one of those big ones. Like they right. had to win one of those games, right. and they just they didn't yeah. do it. So, um, but anyways, quickly back to Penn State before we do the NFL thing, um, and and kind of James Franklin, Franklin, James Franklin, and the uh, the state of Penn State football. You know, after a few years now, and all the stuff that happened, and even the the last decade or so, a twelve game regular season. I'm happy with a nine and three 
Yeah. And, and going to a nice bowl. Yeah. Like that, Are you that talking makes for me next happy. year? Or well, and, and just talking year. in general, yeah, right? Yeah. Now, now I, do I want to always strive for 12 and 0? Yeah, yeah. Of course I want them playing in, in the college football playoff. But, you know, being 9 and 3, or man, to get to, to 10 wins in the regular season before the right. bowl game, that would be huge. Like a 9 or 10 win season before the bowl would be incredible. Right. And that's what you're hoping Penn State is building right. towards. Now, honestly, next year, I'd love an 8 or. If we could get to eight wins and then win a bowl game to get to nine. Eight, eight wins and a bowl win next I'd be, year, I'd be he's absolutely safe. I think eight wins at all, he's safe. If he only gets to right. seven, then, there's then gonna be he's some still going to be around for the next year, but he's going to need to hit a home run the next right, year. Right, yeah. But if he gets to eight, if they go eight and four and win that bowl game right. to go nine and four and have two two bowl well, wins in three and years. Some of that is, is luck of the draw. Like, you know, if they end up in a different bowl game not playing Georgia. Now, I know people are like, Georgia didn't have any of their huh. coaching staff. Yeah, but they're still a good team. I'd and also, they were like one of the best pass right pass defenses in the nation. So I, I know and, this is this is, you know, kind of ridiculous to say because we lost to them four five years ago, but I, I want to go and play Georgia. I don't want to go and play Houston. No, you know, I, I don't want to go I, I want to play the big teams. Like You're they, right. they hyped up playing Georgia because it's only the second time the teams have ever met. And the last right. time it was at the Georgia Dome playing right. for the national championship right. in uh, the January, I think it was literally, was it to the day? Or it was like a day off? I think like so. Like 33 yeah. years later yeah. that they played. And uh, it was awesome, the, the symmetry there, because we all know Greg Garrity caught the game when he touched down, right. and his son was fielding punts for uh, Penn State uh, during so, the game. No, I, I agree. And, you know, and going to Jacksonville and playing there, I thought last year's bowl game in New York, so close to I home think there's against a, better a winnable appeal. game, was, was a great opportunity. Stepping I think stone. if you were to flip them, I'd be like, people would be like, oh, step back, you know, playing in New York. But, you know, no, but- I think eight eight wins in the regular season next year would be great. The tough thing is, and, and here's where Franklin can really buy himself, like, a lot of um, clout maybe with, with the fans. They got to win week one against Akron or Kent, whoever they play week one. They need to beat Pitt. And then they play at Pitt week two. If they win that game, which is going to be a tough game, Narduzzi's got that. They're they're forming into that that Michigan State mold of we're going to run the ball and have a good defense. If they can beat them, all of a sudden everybody's everybody's jumping back on board. Like all the people on the fence are going to jump on board if he beats Pitt. Real quickly about the bowl games, I. The, the appeal of the Pinstripe Bowl in Yankee Stadium is better than Tax Slayer Bowl and Everbank yeah. Field. Boston College versus Georgia. Georgia is the bigger brand name, but Boston right. College is a regional and classic opponent for Penn State. Yeah. So I definitely take the Pinstripe Bowl. Of course, it helps that Penn State won. Right, exactly. And in, in dramatic fashion. Um, you know, but that's where we're at. Um, no, yeah, and and we'll have to wait and see kind of how this all, how it all plays out. But again, I think when you look at it, Penn State has a chance to to do some things next year. Um, it, it's going to be tough though, because if they lose the pit, then you're going to hear more of that. Yeah, I just you're going to hear more of that it's, call. It would, it's like losing the Temple this year, but magnified by a hundred. Right, <laughs> right. Which is crazy because Pitt historically has been a better team than Temple. But but it's Pitt. <laughs> and Pitt beat, beat us most recently in the early 2000s, yeah. whereas Temple hadn't beaten us in, what, 50, 60 years? In our years. lifetimes. Right, yeah. yeah. And even almost in our parents' yeah. lifetimes. <laughs> That's true. That's true. So, uh, it, it, but it'll be bad because Temple was seen as not even the little brother, whereas Pitt is seen as the little brother. And I know, like, Pitt fans like to say, oh, we have more Heisman Trophy winners and we have more national championships yeah, with our mythical national life, championships. lifetimes. Until... And, like I like that stat. Somebody threw this out with with Notre Dame. This is a long time ago, but threw it out there with Notre Dame. Yeah, but how many since the invention of color television? <laughs> and and that well, and also like, none of them. One. Act, There's like, one Notre Dame. The ones that since a lot of these television. teams claim right. weren't just like before the college football playoff or the bowl champions championship series, which technically I don't. That wasn't a real national championship either. Right. I guess it's still not an. It's not an NCAA sanctioned national championship yet. No, it's just no, a playoff. No, because you're right. Yeah. So, you know, the politics and semantics aside, everyone kind of – the de facto national championship was the AP right. for the most part. And, co- you know, there's all these polls. If the AP awarded the national championship, that was the one that everyone thought of. Well, some of these schools, like Pitt, 
choose whatever publication or person out there that was seen as it's like Penn State saying their national championships in the ninety four or, or like when Nixon like, gave it to Texas. Right. Penn State doesn't claim that one. Right. Even though they had an equally good argument to say they right. were the national champions, they don't take it. Right. They take eighty two and eighty six. Right. The only That's two it. were one met two in the championship game. Right. And they're two of the greatest bowl games in history. Uh, honestly the one against Miami oh, in '86 may, is still probably the greatest Do you remember, college football I know. game ever. Um, Do you remember reading until TCU the, like the ESPN like special on that? Like, yeah, the day college football went to hell. Yeah, yeah, I have a bookmark it's, it's saved because it's incredible. <laughs> it's a great read. So, all right. So enough of college football in Penn State. Let's get to the NFL. We got about 20 minutes here to run down what's going on in NFL Week 17. Unfortunately, this is the last week of the regular season, um, and that's crappy for many reasons because. The uh, NF or the uh, professional football pool is now going to be decreased significantly over the coming mm-hmm. weeks. Um, right now, we're being blessed with what ten games going on at the moment. Next mm-hmm. week, we'll only have one game. Right. <laughs> on the other hand, I feel like this year it's almost like all right, teams at at or above five hundred, you're going to still play. Everyone else, you're done. You're done. <laughs> <laughs> so there's uh, 10 games going on right now, uh, like we said at the top of the show. The most important is probably the Jets visiting the Bills. The Bills are holding on to a lead. They are midway through the third – well, they're five minutes into the third quarter, 10 minutes to go in the third. Buffalo leads 16-10 to 10. again. The Jets win. They're in the playoffs. They lose, and the Steelers win. The Steelers are in the playoffs. That's pretty much the only AFC seed up for grabs. All the other five spots are clinched. It's just the order – as to be determined based on the results of the Patriots Dolphins game, the uh, Ravens Bengals game, and then later the Chargers Broncos game. Broncos Bengals and Patriots, I believe, all can still possibly grab the number one or two seed. Right, I think the Broncos could end up anywhere one, two, three, or six. Yeah, or, or something or like five that. Five or something right, yeah, like that. something yeah. absurd. It was something ridiculous like that. Um, <coughs> so the teams are mostly known. It's the positioning that's to be determined still. Um, so generally, my Dolphins don't mean anything this late in the year, but because they're playing New England, who's trying to get home field advantage, right. it's meaningful that Miami and New England are still tied at 10 with right. about halfway through the third quarter. Now, New England does have the ball, but uh, they haven't. The, the offense hasn't stood up yet. Of course, we know Justin already mentioned some of the injuries that they've been going through. They've had issues on the offensive line all year. Edelman's out. Uh, I, uh, Nate Solder, I believe, is out. Uh, or no, Sebastian Vollmer, probably, possibly both of them right. uh, are out. So it, Patriots going through injuries, but like Justin said, if they get at least a bye, whether it's home field or not, they will expect a majority of their big-time playmakers that weren't put on IR back for the divisional round in two weeks. Yeah, I, um, when you look at the NFC South, um, moving to the Saints and Falcons, uh, a lot of people believe Sean Payton's the last game with the Saints. Um, which, but it's kind of an odd situation because I don't think his contract is up. So right. they're talking about the Saints may try to trade like, him, trade him, which is tough because teams you generally have to give up a lot in order for that to happen. Um, and is he still worth it? Right. You know, like they haven't really been the same since he was suspended for a year. Yeah, really. Since um, since Bounty Gate, um, and, he hasn't gotten right. too much. The Falcons, on the other hand, winning last week. And then they're tied right now, 17-17. Honestly, I think winning last week and then possibly winning today um, potentially save their coach's job. Well, um, I don't think Quinn was in I, trouble, but I, it was the GM Dimitrov right, that right. we were talking and, about. And I don't, I don't think he gets fired. But if you lose, like, what would it have been? Like eight or nine in a row to end the season? Eight out of nine or something right. like that. Yeah. It. It doesn't look good, right. especially it, when you started 5-0 it would, over 6-1. Right. It wouldn't surprise me if it happened. So I think the win last week over Carolina kind of sealed his deal because they'll at least be 500 now. Um, that's a close game right now, um, 17-17, but two teams that are going to kind of have to go back to the drawing board a little bit. I think the Falcons are in a much better position uh, because I think as you get um, – as Quinn can hopefully build that defense for them, hopefully build that defense – up there um, that'll take some of the stress off of that offense. Although they're still trying a lot of like doubt made its way to the surface this year about Matt Ryan and yeah. whether he's actually the real deal or not. We've had those questions for a long time. This I, is also like his eighth season in the league. Like he's know, no he's longer, around, right? like you're no longer waiting for something to happen. It, if it's going to happen, it'll have right. happened already. Right. Are his best seasons the years that he 
didn't play real well in the in the playoffs. Right. And, and the team didn't play real well in the playoffs. Are right. those it? So that's the interesting quarterback situations in the NFC South with the Saints and Falcons. And we'll keep you updated on that. They're tied right. 17-17 with about five minutes to play in the third quarter. Another irrelevant game in the NFC North, uh, only shuffling what will be next year's schedule depending on where these teams finish. The Lions are in Chicago, but they hold the lead over the Bears 17-10. to the yeah. Bears um, coach is safe. The Lions coach is up in the air. We don't know what's going to happen with Carwell. Right. Yeah, you don't know. And again, some some changes there. Now they uh, get a win there and place. finish seven and nine. They rebounded. Yeah, pretty absolutely. pretty good because they weren't weren't they like one and five or something yeah. like that. Yeah. So they they definitely came on strong in the second half of the year. Um, with the issues they had at the beginning of the year, we focused a lot on the defense uh, and. Bad reads by Matthew Stafford and yeah. a poor offensive game plan. Which when he got pulled. He well, got pulled. Well, and game. they finally fired the OC, and they hired Jim Bob Cooter. They yeah. promoted him, and they actually have looked decent, much better. Yeah. And you think if they win here and they go seven and nine, you win. Now they're in a tough division with the Packers and Vikings this year, but you know they win two more games, they're in the play for a poss- possibility at a wild card in, in the middle of the year. You know you're right. thinking there's a possibility. Obviously, we know that probably wasn't going to happen. Yeah. With the way some of the other teams went streaking. Um, closer to home here, the Eagles now trail the Giants after going up 14-3. to The uh, Eagles are losing to the Giants 21-27. to The most interesting thing pointed out by a lot of beat writers and something Justin and I talked about before the show started, the loser of this game gets to go to London next year and play the Rams, whereas the winner of this game has to go to Seattle and play the Seahawks. And I, I presented the question to you, which would you rather be? And without hesitation, you say you'd rather lose and go to London. Yeah. it Honestly, like... Look, th- there's a possibility the Rams are in L.A. next year, right? So you're talking a long flight either way. It would actually be a longer flight for the home Rams in London by, like, double. Yeah. <laughs> and you're playing the Rams versus the Seahawks. Now, the Rams have, you know, I who knows what you're going to get there. You know, they can run the ball sometimes. You, but if I have to pick between playing the Rams in London, which is not that much longer of a flight, or... Seattle in in Seattle, in Seattle which is uh, again just that's, all, that's like a six hour flight too like and you're probably gonna lose about, <laughs> right exactly takes I'll take it and don't forget, you're gonna get the better draft pick then like well, and also who would you rather play Russell Wilson or Nick Foles slash Case Keenum to me, it's not a difficult like, question. It's not. You're right. It's not. When you look at it that way, people were talking about it though. I'm not rooting. Oh, do you want to go I'm to London? Do you want to go to London? Right. I'm not rooting for them to lose. However, I am rooting for them to lose. Right. <laughs> right. That's like, the other part of that. Right. right. I'm, not, I'm not rooting for them to lose, but I'm rooting for. But them it. To lose. But I'm saying it's better if they do. That's basically. You're right. You're right. Your better draft pick. Get some international travel, playing a weaker team. Right. And I know the Eagles haven't gone to London yet, so they're due. Um. Yeah, because Miami's been there like three times. Right, so the Eagles have that coming up. And if you make the playoffs, you're exempt. You don't have to go. Um, but that obviously isn't happening. I I fail to see the downside of the Eagles losing this game. Yeah, I, you're, I, I completely agree. I mean, to go 7-9? and nine? And look at all the – like we just talked about it. The Giants are seven or will be seven and nine if they win. So the Eagles would be ahead of them when they pick. We just talked about um, I, I forget what if you can scroll up just a uh, second. Lions. There's, there's a number. Of, yeah, the Lions and Bears are both six and nine. So they're gonna actually. It'll probably be better for the Eagles. I don't know how it works out for draft tiebreakers if the Bears won that game because the Lions beat the Eagles. So and you they want would, the Saints to win, right? We want, we want the, the Saints, Saints right? To win. Like, you know, they the Eagles. If things felt right, could gain like five or six spots in the draft today. Now I don't know if that's a good thing, but I'm just... right, yeah. I mean, who who knows? It's tough to look at. Right. Before we leave this game, both coaches one gone yeah. already. Chip Kelly fired by the Eagles. Interim coaches Pat Shermer, who um, had been with the Packers a while ago, then coached the Browns for a bit. Uh, he is expected to at least get an interview to possibly keep the job with the Eagles. Uh, we'll have to talk about the Eagles coaching search probably on the show next week during yeah. the playoffs. But the Giants, is Tom Coughlin, is, is his reign as coach ending no matter what yeah, the outcome I is think, today? I think he's stepping down. You think he'll resign I saw or the retire? Reports, his entire family, this never happens, his entire family's at the game today. And they have Coughlin's, so he's gonna retire. They have like Coughlin's crew t-shirts on. And yeah, he declined to answer when he was asked directly if he is retiring. But um, a lot of people think he is stepping down today. 
All right. Uh, in the other NFC East matchup, it, that is completely irrelevant because the Redskins beat the Eagles last week, locked up the, the division championship. They are beating the Cowboys, who locked up the last place in the division, 24-14. to We obviously know Redskins coach Jay Gruden is safe. The Cowboys have also said that their head coach is also safe. So we get another year of Jason Garrett in Dallas. Heard and the GM uh, is safe there, too. Yeah, I would think so. Um, the Cowboys are an inter- interesting one. They, if they, the sticks, the 24 to 14 lead by Washington sticks, and the Cowboys drop to 4 and 12, they're going to have a high draft pick. And, and I really think if they were healthy this year, yeah. that they would have been pushing. I mean, I really right. think they could have easily gone 9 right. 7. The, the issue. So becomes... It's one of those things. The team that had suffered some bad luck gets a high pick. If they hit that pick, right. all of a sudden you go from 4 and 12 to 10 and 6 right. in one yeah. offseason. Right. And. The the issue is going to be with comes down to Tony Romo's health though. Yeah, like, oh yeah, and it's a huge question mark. Right, it's and a huge issue. It, like it would probably benefit them to actually go out and get a legitimate backup quarterback. You know, when your quarterback is Tony Romo, like you you have to do that because he's hurt a lot now. Um, you know, they need to go out and get somebody who maybe a quarterback that loses their starting job this year. Or you know, or a team that brings in a younger guy. I I'm not really can't think of one off the top of my head, but somebody that can like that probably isn't going to be their team starter next year. Right. But all of a sudden, you know, you can bring him in and he can be a serviceable um, backup because they have the other pieces. There's not. Let's come back to that actually. Uh, let's in the AFC South and game that is essentially irrelevant because of the what the Texans are doing um, again. AFC South interdivision matchups. Titans at Colts. Colts are winning 27-17. to Indianapolis had to win this game for their very, very, very slim playoff hopes to stay alive. Oh. They are going to do that, but uh, Houston also winning, which would give them the division title outright. Texans up on Jaguars 20-3. to Jaguars coach staying on for sure. Gus Bradley will be back. Texans obviously keeping O'Brien after a year that he wins the division and does it with four different quarterbacks. Titans already fired Wisenhunt. Is Chip Kelly going to be headed there? That's one of the rumors circulating. See, uh, this morning they're saying that they may stick with. Uh, I heard they, they may stick with Malarkey. They're undecided, but like that, he has a legitimate chance to actually be. Well, kept I think the same there. thing. I think Shermer has a legitimate chance at Philly too, but that right. doesn't mean he's going to get the job. Right, right. Um, Colts. It seems that they're going to be saying goodbye to Pagano. Uh, his contract is actually up, so it's not, right. they don't they're, even have to fire right. him. I they keep seeing the headline. He's fired. No, he's not. No, he's just he's just not a free retained. agent, not right. returning. Yeah. So uh, that's what's going on in the AFC South. Uh, in the AFC North, again, all the teams playing one another. Ravens, Bengals, only important depending on what happens with the other teams on top of the AFC and the Broncos and Patriots. Bengals are beating the Ravens right now, 14-9, something the Steelers couldn't do last week. Right. So the Bengals looking to move to 12-4. and four. There's nine minutes left in the third quarter, so a lot of time remaining. Elsewhere in the AFC North, Steelers at Browns. Steelers have an eight-point lead, 17-9, to halfway through the third. Again, the Steelers must win this game to make the playoffs. And if they win the game, they have to hope the Jets lose to the Bills, which we had said was currently happening. And the yeah. Bills have actually extended that lead to nine points. They now lead 19-10. to So things are looking good for Pittsburgh, but a lot of time left in both games. Right, and I know Browns fans would love nothing more. Knock them the, out. There is nothing... Uh, that well, is a Steelers fan's nightmare right, right. to be at nine Browns, and five to lose to a crappy Ravens right. team and then lose to the crappy Browns. Right. Br- yeah, to, to lose end your the, playoff hopes. Right, right. To your two biggest rivals. Right, and, and there couldn't be a sweeter four and twelve season for the Browns than to beat the Steelers at the very end to keep them out. Yep. Um, so we'll keep know. an eye on that game as well. Now the late games again: Chargers, Broncos. Some, mostly irrelevant. We know Denver's in the playoffs, but like Justin said, they could be seated almost anywhere in the AFC field. If they win, they obviously uh, will know going into it where that'll put them because spending, the Bengals and Patriots will spending have finished. Spending some time in in uh, Denver this week, this past week, it's interesting to me. Many, many people have the attitude of Peyton is done. When Even yeah. if he gets healthy, like he's not, he's done in Denver. That Brock Osweiler has to be the guy moving yep. forward. Uh, yeah. Now, they also the some of the people I was talking to are not sold on Brock Osweiler. Well, no, but, but after a like, couple games, right? They're like a handful yeah, of games. The, you know, and it'll be interesting though. Like if they if they were to lose this game and the offense doesn't look good, and it, but they somehow right. still get a buy, like do you go with Peyton in in the 
in the, in playoffs. the playoffs? Like, I, I don't know. I don't know what you do. Yeah, it, it's, it's an interesting situation to be in. Before we leave the, the AFC North completely um, and jump ahead to the late games, continuing the Chargers-Broncos talk, um, the coaching situations in the North, Harbaugh, I would think, is back with Baltimore. Unless I he think, wants out. Right, unless he's ready to go. I think he's back. Marvin Lewis is obviously coming back for the Bengals. I mean, unless they'd have a playoff meltdown and look terrible. Right. I mean, you go... I at worst, think, eleven and five, if not twelve and four, and have a first round bye. You think you're coming back right. next year, especially with the injury. Now, if the, if Andy Dalton were healthy and they were to lose their first playoff game this year, he could have been fired. Like as crazy as right. that is, because that's well, we've been seen the it thing. Before. However, I think the injury there is going to buy him the benefit of the doubt. Even if Dalton comes back and plays, everyone's going to understand he's not a hundred percent. But they need the bye to have any chance of him coming back. The Steelers and uh, Omar Epps look alike. He's back, uh, I would assume, for the Steelers. Yeah. Uh, although, if they lose the Browns and the Ravens, there will be people calling for They'll his be, job. Right, Absolutely. but it's the Rooney family. They're patient. They Yeah, you know, please had, fire him. Like, right, please, please. Yeah. And then please. go to Philadelphia, right? Head across yes. the state. Um, but Browns looks like send, saying goodbye to Pet, Petten after, yeah, what, two shocker. seasons. But Cleveland's such and a And they fired their GM, fire. too. It could be a landing spot for Chip Kelly. <laughs> it's a possibility. Uh, I heard Wisenhunt possibly get a look there because mm-hmm. I think he got a raw deal in Tennessee. That was kind of a yes. quick, weird uh, thing Which going on there. Which is weird that they would have the quick trigger with Wisenhunt and then give the job to the interim. You right. Know, like, Who's failed in Buffalo and Jacksonville. Right. I don't know. But um, the Browns also one of the top spots for Adam Gase, and there's also rumors this links back to Chargers Broncos that if the Broncos cut bait with Manning and Manning wants to play one more year, not necessarily for a championship drive, but to prove that he can still play, could he reunite with Gase in Cleveland for a season? I've heard that Gase wants nothing to do with Cleveland. That's, that's oh, he the, went that's the, are word. they were going to say Manning? No, that's the word out of Cleveland is that Gase but doesn't want Cleveland. But whoever really does want anything to do with Cleveland. Right, and – and here's the thing. You got to look like this is the interesting part. Like Chip, the places I've heard that are possible landing places, Cleveland for Chip um, with Johnny Manziel, who we recruited um, and Colin Kaepernick in San Francisco, because in San Fran, we'll talk about that in a minute. It looks like they're going to be moving on from their head coach. So, um, okay. That's interesting but because it seems as though San Francisco had moved on from Colin Kaepernick. If you bring in Chip Kelly, did you? Do you rejuvenate? Like, I don't know. Yeah, well, quickly, Seahawks, Cardinals, I think m- mostly Car- irrelevant. Seahawks are locked into a wild card. Cardinals, Cardinals won the can division, get the one but seed. But if the Cardinals right. win and the Panthers lose, Cardinals are the one seed. So they do have something to play for. They, and, of course, you want to beat a division rival, but you also don't want to get beat up heading into the playoffs when you know you have a first-round bye right. and home field until the championship game. Um, and if the Panthers lose, you have home field again. Yeah. So and I think that I think home field is less meaningful to the Cardinals in that championship game than it is the Panthers. I think if you're the if you get that Panthers Cardinals matchup, which is unlikely to get the one two, but if you do, I think it's much more important for the Panthers to be playing in Carolina than it is for Arizona to be playing in Arizona. AFC, Just the way the defenses are structured and everything. There. The other way AFC West showdown is Oakland, Kansas City. Oakland can't make the playoffs, but they can make a respectable 500 season for them, which would be the first time in like eight or so years. I think it was the yeah. mid 2000s. Al Davis would have fired him. Right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so they're trending upwards. Just they were inconsistent this year, but Derek Carr, that offense, there's some parts there. They had some pieces along the offensive line and a few areas in def- on defense, and uh, they could be a challenger for uh, whatever happens with the Broncos, Chiefs, Chargers next year because that, that West division is, is interesting. It was terrible before. Now it's interesting. Yeah. Um, the Chiefs have a chance to go on a 10-game winning streak to end the season. They're 10 and 5 <laughs> in the playoffs. They win the game. Now, if they win and the Broncos lose, is there any chance for the Chiefs yeah. to win the division? Yeah, they can okay. win the division, yep, so, which would uh, bump the Broncos to a wild card. Well, yeah, that's right. That's why the Broncos right. could fall to the 5 or right. 6 or whatever it was. So a uh, lot to play for for Kansas City in that game. We mentioned the Panthers. They host the Buccaneers. Panthers win. They're the one seed and the best team in the NFL by record, 15-1. They'll have home field advantage through the NFC playoffs. Respectable season by the Buccaneers, real quick. Just having one, yeah, only they, one or two games last year. They look good all year. of a sudden, especially after they beat the Eagles, like crushed them. People jumped on board, but then I think they lost to like, then, the Saints and the Colts. Right. And then they looked young yeah. and were super inconsistent that but second half. But they're trending upwards. Absolutely. And with the, with the, who knows what's going on with the Saints, the Rams – are kind of just treading water and have a terrible quarterback situation. Um, and, you know, we've seen in the NFC South before, the, sometimes the best team falls off the next year. The Panthers now yeah. have been on top three years in a row, but there's nothing to say. They're, they're, they're a Cam Newton injury from 
from being, being irrelevant. Five and, eight, and all of a know, sudden, Jameis like Winston right. is back uh, is back on top where he was at Florida State a few years right, ago. So, right. um, but this is likely the Pan. This is definitely the Panthers game to lose, and I expect them to win this one to to save save the date and seal the deal. Uh, for the NFL NFC playoffs. Then the most interesting game of the week was obviously Flex to Sunday night, which we talked about a few weeks ago. Depending on the, how the dominoes fell in weeks of 14, 15, and 16, what would the Sunday night game be? It ends up being basically the AFC or excuse me, the NFC North Championship game where Minnesota goes to Green Bay. The Packers got the better of the Vikings earlier this year, and it was a big deal because it was something that Minnesota hasn't been able to do recently. It was at home that time. This time it's on the road in Lambeau. And I believe the Packers have lost their other two home division games this year. Could be the first time they lose all three home division games in like 30 or 40 years. Something wow. else, a really long time. And I, I got to say, right now, and this is, but this was true the first meeting, the Vikings are playing better football. Right. We saw the Packers get housed by the Cardinals last week. Now it's the Cardinals. They're a good team. But the Vikings, Packers, both 10-5. and five. Winner gets the division, and I guess the – Three seed, yeah, right. three seed. There's a chance that the way things fall, they'll play each other. Next they could week. play each other next week. I don't think that's going to happen, but it, I, I don't. I'd have yeah, to I, I, I don't think remember about like it. if the Vikings so. win, do they play the Packers or could they play the right. Seahawks? I don't know, but the Vikings and Seahawks have met already once this year, and the Seahawks got. I think better. The, I think them. it would require the Seahawks to win, and like I, I don't know. Right. It, if the Seahawks it would, it would beat be the Cardinals, they'd be ten and six. They would probably be the five seed, whereas the the loser would be the six seed. I think. Right. right. Yeah, uh, I, I don't but, know. Yeah, let's not get into that. Um, so that's that. That's NFL Week 17. Uh, some of the early games, not really any changes of no. Oh, the Eagles retook the lead over the Giants. So, uh, Wonderful. Your unfortunate um, season continues as right. now when you want them to lose, they're going to end up winning and right. screwing everything up. Right. The Bengals Mango. have extended their league over the Ravens. They're up by 12 now. The Browns now. are in the red zone. The Browns are threatening. With, yeah, they're with, at the Pittsburgh with 20. second and 17 at the 20-yard line. <laughs> That's hard that's to do. That's so Browns. Okay. So, well, I think that's about it. Um, next week we'll talk, obviously, divisional playoff games. There'll probably be one going on when we're doing the game. Well, actually, the two have been finished. One will be happening, and we'll have one to preview. But we'll also get into the Eagles coaching search and the possible quarterback carousel that's going to happen uh, yeah. after the coaches are in place and everyone determines what they're doing with the draft. Uh, Christian Hackenberg declared yesterday after the game in which he got hurt in the the Penn State Nittany Lions Bowl game, uh, barely played any of the game. He said that he was moving on to the NFL. So did teammate Austin Johnson. So we know that two Penn Staters that had eligibility left will be moving on. But Hackenberg is going to be one that you're going to hear a lot about because NFL scouts still think he has it. It's just how much... Yeah, you know, how much has he hurt his stock over the last two seasons? I honestly have no idea what to really think. Like, I think I he got a, a a draft grade from that you know the the council that they can solicit. Uh -huh. um, I think he probably got a grade of two to three. Right. I think at worst, and I think he thinks he can get into one or two. I think he's at worst a top sixty pick, and I think right. as the combine moves so, along, you see other people so work out. You're telling out. me the Texans who could be drafting late. In the first round. Let's say the last That's third like, of the first round, the last third of the second round, or could maybe trade up into that second I, round. I honestly think he's going to go, and you can quote me on this. I'll put it out here for everyone to reference. I really think he's going to go between, I'll say, 24 and 44. So I think late first, early second. I just think he has the size, he has the tools. He's a pure prototype pocket passer uh, that most teams tend to want. He's, I think he's the perfect example of, just one of those guys that the scouts are going to fall in love. He's got all well, they, those things. Well, I already like, did coming out of high school. Right, I they know. They did his first year as a I freshman know, with O'Brien. Now, the system wasn't great the last few years, and they had a terrible line. Now, not everything – I'm not making excuses no, for him. because he still misses he a lot mistakes, of passes. But, but I, I mean, and maybe in Houston, if he would end up with O'Brien again, he doesn't have to start right away. They, they have I mean, Brian Hoyer. He gets injured That's though, the key. make the way. Like you go in that late first round, you might not be guaranteed to start right away. You go in the and second, you're probably you second not guaranteed. Round, to you're start. probably absolutely not guaranteed so. to start. Not the worst thing that could happen for him, you know. No. So I, I, that's where I'll put my money right now. I'll say between pick twenty four and forty four. That's where I think Christian Hackenberg is going. All right. All right. Anything else from you? Anything else to add? Uh no. Yeah, I don't <laughs> think uh, anything. Uh, I have anything else to say either. Uh, I will say. Uh, Happy early birthday to my sister, who uh, will be celebrating tomorrow. 
And uh, another successful season of shows during the regular season. We had a lot of fun covering yeah. uh, Wilson, Penn State, and mostly NFL. And uh, we'll be back for the next month leading up to the Super Bowl to talk. I think we'll only have one missed week, and that'll be the week that there aren't any games at the end of the month. So Sounds it works out really, really, yeah. really well. So we will have divisional wild card coverage, divisional coverage, conference championship coverage. We'll take a break, and then our, we'll have our 200th show, actually, for the Super Bowl. Sounds good. So, uh Super Bowl, 200 show, 50 year anniversary, all happening um, right at the beginning of February. So stay tuned for that. We'll probably do a a, a um, Super Bowl preview and then also uh, maybe like a listener special. We'll solicit some questions and, and cool. stuff like that. So a lot to look forward to. But um, I think that's it. Since nothing else has happened in the games in the last few minutes, we'll sign off and get to the TVs to find out where uh, all the uh, AFC and NFC teams will be slotted for the uh, upcoming playoffs. All right, we'll be back next week on episode 197, Talking NFL Wild Card Weekend. Thanks for joining us. That wraps up the 196th episode of the Joe Mays and J-Raff Show. We, we hope you tune in every Sunday afternoon for our take on sports. Until next time, I'm J-Raff. And I'm Joe Mays. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening to the Joe Mays and J-Raff Show. Don't forget... You can download each episode of the show from the podcast section of the iTunes store. We'll see you next time, and thanks again for listening. 